when you are in a merry-go-round you feel this outward force called the centrifugal force if you mix sand with water and make it rotate just like you rotate in a merry-go-round the sand particles also feel this centrifugal force if you keep rotating this mixture of water and sand the sand particles will eventually settle at the bottom. This principle is used in biology to separate out cells or even biomolecules from a water suspension. For the rotation, there is this device called a centrifuge. And centrifuges can actually rotate in large speeds so that even, even smaller particles like biomolecules such as proteins or DNA, which are much smaller than sand particles or us in a merry-go-round, even they can settle down with such high speeds. And this process of taking an aqueous solution or suspension and rotating it in a centrifuge is called centrifugation. There are different types of centrifugation depending on what we need to do and one of the types is called density gradient centrifugation. In this type of centrifugation what we do is we take a substance and make a concentration gradient of it along this solution in the tube that is being rotated. So the substances that we usually make a density gradient of are say sucrose or cesium chloride. So the concentration of this substance increases towards the bottom of the tube. So when you take genomic DNA and centrifuge it using the density gradient technique, what you see is you get a band like this. The DNA settles right here, not at the bottom, even though DNA is heavier than water. It still settles here because there is a density gradient. Usually the substance used is cesium chloride. So there is this gradient and the DNA will go and settle at that point where the density of the solution matches the density of the DNA. So since the density of the solution because of cesium chloride is increasing as you go downwards, there will come a point where the density of the DNA matches the density of the solution. That is where the DNA goes and settles and forms this band. Now you would expect only one band right for DNA but in fact we see a few minor bands and those are called satellite bands. or satellite DNA. So what is this satellite DNA? So when you isolate the genomic DNA from a cell, it has a fixed density for that particular cell or for that particular species. And that depends on the nitrogen base content. So what is the proportion of ATGC, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine? The density of a particular genomic DNA depends on that. That's why you see the main band. This band, this is the genomic DNA band, which has a particular density. There are some DNA sequences in our chromosomes which have tandem repeats. You can take a look at our video on DNA polymorphism in which we talk about tandem repeats where a sequence of DNA is repeated over and over again in a DNA stretch. For example, if you say something, have something like this. And this is repeated again and again. This is called a tandem repeat. And these stretches of DNA usually have a different density. Why? Because they are often more AT rich or more GC rich as compared to the genomic DNA. Now, whenever there is a stretch of DNA that is more GC rich, it has a higher density. I'm not going into the details of the structures, but if you take a look at the structures, you will see that guanine is the biggest nitrogen base. Hence, it has a higher molecular weight and hence it has a higher density. So when you look at the satellite DNA bands, when genomic DNA is centrifuged, you might see some above the genomic DNA band and some 
below the genomic DNA band. So naturally, the ones above the genomic DNA bands will have lower density, right? So that will be AT rich. And the satellite DNA bands that are below the genomic DNA band or the main band are the GC rich sequences which have a higher density. Satellite DNA can be of different types based on the length of the sequence that is being repeated over and over again. The two major types of satellite DNA that we see very often are mini satellites and microsatellites. Mini, as the name suggests, is bigger than micro. Mini satellites have a base pair length of around 10 to 100. And microsatellites, they have a base pair of length of less than 10 base pairs usually. Both the types of satellite DNA have a high degree of polymorphism. As you can find in our video on polymorphism, this means that there is a high probability of variations in these DNA sequences. Why? Because these sequences are not found in the coding regions of DNA. They are found in places like telomeres or centromeres. Since they are not found in the coding regions, the probability of them accumulating in subsequent generations is high because they are not really affecting the proteins that we produce from our coding DNA sequences. And because of their high degree of polymorphism, they result in a lot of variations that we see around us. Satellite DNA has applications in various fields. A popular one is DNA fingerprinting. which we will look at in a different video.